Hello, this is HNS Riggs and welcome to a basic flight and combat tutorial for Armor 3. Over the years I've trained a lot of people in various games uh, how to fly planes and helicopters and spaceships and the like, uh, usually to the point that they end up flying better than me and shoot me out of the sky, those ungrateful bastards. Anyway, I'm just a gamer, not a pilot, I'm not ex-military. This tutorial is really just for people who want to know how to fly no mumbo jumbo. In advance, I do apologize, but one snake was harmed in the making of this video. I'll start off with the very basics. Mouse and keyboard control setup, takeoff, turning and landing, and then I'll move on to combat. I'll link a video timeline below for anyone who wants to jump straight to combat or wants to jump straight to landing. It's all up to you. Okay, so first up, I'm sure you know this already, but to get into your Albatross 143 buzzard, you middle mouse click while looking at the cockpit and little steering wheel icon will come up. I think this works best from the left hand side because you get in from the left hand side, that's where the cockpit opens. Now let's look at the basic control setup I have. I like to configure all my jets, planes, spaceships all about the same way. The only change I've made recently is moving from my mouse up to point my nose up. Uh, I used to prefer the more authentic one of mouse down to move my nose up, but a lot of games default it the other way, so it seemed a, a better way for aiming anyway. One of the reasons I like using the mouse is because I can switch from being in a jet or a helicopter to run around in, on the ground shooting people and I don't really have to move my hands anywhere else. Um, the mouse is also really good for fine aiming when you're flying. So the basic controls for the mouse is mouse down, up, left, right for nose down, up, left, right. To configure those you just click on the assigned key that you want to assign. Uh, a little menu appears on the right hand side and you pull like for example mouse left across from that menu into the uh, controls that you want to configure. I increase thrust using a W and I decrease thrust using S. Left and right pedal is A and D respectively. If you hate the mouse another config you can play with is using the up down left right arrow keys on your keyboard instead of using mouse up down left right which I also actually have configured with my mouse in this setup. I've left my gears and flaps default so control G for the gears and you can toggle that and the flaps are control K uh, to lower your flaps and control L to raise your flaps and by default G is the flares. Right, so enough about the controls, let's get airborne. To get airborne we basically have to hold down W, this increases our throttle. If you hold it down you will keep maximum throttle and that will help you take off. So by holding down W your jet's going to get started up, it'll take a few seconds and then it will slowly start to move forward. Like I said, keep holding down W, giving yourself maximum speed and that will let you take off as fast as you possibly can. You will need to reach at least 170 km per hour before you take off. Uh, getting a little more speed allows you to lift without losing too much speed as you lift, which would cause you to stall. Uh, lifting the nose of the plane slightly, which is messed up for my controls, until you gain more speed is a good idea, so don't like lift your plane vertically upwards or things are going to go horribly wrong. Press Ctrl G to raise your gears and um, you can tap enter on the numpad to get a third person view if you want to check that your gears are actually going up. If you don't hit Ctrl G properly you end up hitting G and flares pop out instead. A big difference between games like Arma and other games like Battlefield 3 is that in Arma your plane has weight. When you lift off it'll kill some of your speed, when you turn you're going to lose speed. Um, the best way to gain speed is basically keeping your plane straight and holding down W. Um, to, to go maximum velocity. Also, any time you turn you'll generally want to hold W to keep your speed increasing um, and to lose as little speed as possible unless you are actually turning into a runway or something and you're trying to lose speed. In that case it can be pretty useful. One thing to note is when you are going really really fast you actually have wider turns and when you're going a bit slower you have smaller turns. So if you want to do a tight turn you might actually want to hold S and slow down. Uh, it really depends on where you are and what you're doing. So it's something to consider is that you do have to take care of your speed using WNS on my control configuration when you're flying. Uh, a lot more so than games like Battlefield 3. So you want to pick up some really good speed before you play with turning. Uh, to turn you just roll your mouse left or right and then when you're on your side you just pull your nose up. In my case that's pushing the mouse forward. Uh, this will turn your plane nice and fast. So go on your side and put your nose uh, up, which
which is basically pushing my nose forward or at least my mouse forward. By pushing the mouse slowly up you can see that the flight stick of the pilot is all the way back. Uh, you will not turn faster if you move your mouse faster. There's only so fast you can turn. So what you want to do is move your mouse until you see that flight stick the pilot is holding, go back as far as it can go and then move your mouse at a steady slow pace and you'll get a really nice smooth fast as possible turn. You also have rudder control. This is controlled using A and D in my control setup. Uh, this is f really good for fine aiming, it's very good for landing, and it's used when taxiing on runway. It doesn't have any major impact when you're moving very fast, however. For landing, it's a good idea to check on the map and get some geometry or map coordinates you can line up with well in advance of the runway. Landing isn't too harsh in Armour 3, so you can make some adjustments just before you land, like I did here. Uh, a good landing speed is around 215 kilometers per hour or 230 uh, on entry and then just before you're going to touch out the runway or just before you reach the runway you can start pulling back your speed so your speed will be about 170 kilometers per hour on touchdown. Obviously before you land you're going to want to hit control G by default to get your gears down. Uh, drop your speed and when it feels like your plane is starting to drop on its own tip your nose up a little bit so you land on your back wheels first. Once you feel your plane has touched down, hold back on S to reduce your speed and uh, reduce it all basically until your plane comes to a standstill. If you do want a taxi, you can reduce to about 35 km per hour, which works pretty well for me, and you'll be able to drive your plane around on the runway using your rudder keys, which is A and D. Basic combat. So you've signed up to be a fighter pilot, so you could kill stuff, so let's get straight to that. I'll start talking about the Gatling cannon first. It has about 300 pounds of high explosive rounds. Uh, so you're going to be using that quite a bit. You've only got a couple of missiles, so if you're not going back to base to keep rearming, you probably spend a lot of time shooting your Gatling cannon. Aiming is definitely more tricky in Armour 3 than other games. Uh, you have to think about your speed, your altitude, and the speed and altitude of your enemy, if they're an aircraft especially. Uh, in this case, I'm going to be aiming at ground targets for a while, so they'll be moving slowly, so speed isn't a huge issue, and their altitude won't change much unless they're driving up a hill or being projected into the air by an explosion. Your best bet is to line up early. I have a few trucks set up in Sofia on the map here, so after doing a quick flyby I can see a whole bunch of red dots appear on my radar at the top of the screen. To line up you can just fly out for a while, turn around, line up with one of those red dots on your radar, and then when flying back with that red dot centered on your vertical axis, right click your mouse to zoom your view into the HUD of your cockpit and look for some green squares. The green square represents any of those red dots but showing up on your cockpit and try and line up one of those green squares in the center of your screen. Unless you've locked it, in which case it's a white square instead of a green one with some red text. Um, the best thing to do here is to start eyeballing the enemy as soon as you've done that because the green square doesn't always appear directly on top of the enemy. So once you have them lined up, you're going to want to slow down so you can indeed uh, eyeball the enemy. Once you have them centered, you want to center them in your little white crosshair as much as possible, as fast as possible, um, and then slow your speed down because you're not going to make a lot of fine adjustments as you're coming in at an enemy target at the speed that your, your plane travels fastest at. It's a good idea to shoot a little before the target uh, since it's moving slowly and watch your bullets move into the target. So if the target's in front of you, you shoot early and you'll see your bullets move into the target. As soon as you see your bullets are actually connecting with the target, you can tip your nose down very, very slightly and keep tipping it just very, very slightly to keep your bullets on top of the target. Of course, if you're tipping your nose down, you're going to be losing altitude, so that's why I say very slightly. And when you're losing too much altitude, you're going to want to pull up. So as you're shooting, you're going to have to remember to keep an eye on how high you are and how fast you're going or how slow you're going. Often what we do is we slow down to shoot a target and then we slow down so much that we can't lift up anymore. So when we realize we're going too low, we pull back and, and nothing happens. We end up crashing into the ground because of lack of speed. If you're slightly off center with your target, you can sideswipe them instead of uh, shooting directly at them. So to do this, you'd shoot a little bit before your target, and then you can use your rudder controls, A and D, to kind of swipe your plane to the side, and you might get a few shots off on target. You might get lucky and blow them up. 
Uh, vehicles might not blow up instantly, so watch your radar when you fly over it. If you haven't seen it blow up, uh, the red squares on the radar will probably go grey if the vehicle blows up, so it's a good indicator that you've hit your target. And you can start lining up for another one. For grand targets, you can also use bombs um, and air to ground missiles. These are available from the A143 CAS. If you move your mouse wheel over any of the aircraft, you'll actually see if it's an AA version of the A143 or if it's a CAS version. To lock with ground targets, you switch to your air to ground AG missiles, which is F by default to switch between the different guns on your aircraft. Then when the target's in your HUD, right-click your mouse, and this will do two things. It will zoom in, and it will also lock your target. You'll start hearing the locking sound. When locking, you will hear the beep, beep, beep sound, and then when the reticle gets really small and you've locked onto your target, you're going to hear a steady tone, and that means you're locked, so far away. One thing to remember is that everything is affected by gravity and armor, so are your missiles. It's a good idea to aim slightly above your target. In this case, I have a big green circle that's kind of showing me where is a good place to aim, and I fire my shot when my target is actually in that circle. Uh, the missile shoots over the target and drops down into the target based on gravity. Uh, in this example, I hit it twice just for the fun of it, but you don't really have to do that. If it's such a small vehicle, it'll probably blow up in one hit. For bombs, you just have to take into consideration how fast you're moving, uh, diving towards your target and dropping a bomb on it, then pulling up real fast is a nice simple way to do it. Uh, you'll also notice the indicator on the screen with the little circle moving around and the line attached to it. That kind of gives you an indication where your bomb is going to drop based on the speed you're moving. So if you really speed up, you'll see that indicator starts moving very high, which would be a tough one if you're trying to hit your target unless you're aiming straight at it, uh, nose diving into it. For air targets, they travel much faster, so shoot ahead of a fast-moving target, um, if it's a jet or a helicopter. When using cannons, basically leading your targets and having them fly into your bullets is the best way to do it. To use air-to-air -air missiles, you can switch to the AAS range, which is basically air-to-air -air short range, and use the same approach as when targeting a ground vehicle. So basically, you get them in your view, you right-click, which does two things, it zooms him and locks him. When you hear that steady tone, so there's no more beeps, it's just one tone, fire off your shots. And uh, I usually switch to HE after I fired a few shots so I can throw cannons at them as well just to try and make sure they die. And that's it. With all that information you should be able to fly around and shoot stuff, although not very well and probably I can't do it very well either, so that's okay. Thank you very much for watching. If you found this useful, please subscribe and press a couple of likes to inspire me to do more. and hopefully inspire me to play more because I probably don't play enough these days. If you want uh, personal in-game training, I'm up for that too because that even gives me a better excuse to play more and work less. Happy hunting.